Hi right, guys, here's today's lesson. We're going to do a little bit more work with the transformations. And we're going to look at how do we actually graph from the transformed form. That what we've done a lot of practice with up until now has been I give you the graph, you identify the key features, you use those to get the parameters A, B, C, and D in the transformation form. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work the other way, do a few more examples of this graphing from the equation. All right now, just as a quick recall, as we're looking at it, what we're trying to do first is we want to rewrite this into the transformation form, which is A times, uh, in this case we have a cosine, then we want the factored out B, X minus, we want to reveal the, con the phase shift, and then plus D. So that's the target that we want for this. So the first thing that we should notice in this problem is that when we look at it, that it's not in the correct order for especially the output transformation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by rewriting it as negative 7 cosine. I'm going to leave a pretty big parenthesis here and do plus 5. So I kind of reorder it so that it's in the format so I can figure out what A is and what D is. So in this problem, we'll just start listing them here below. A is going to be negative 7. Now, just as a reminder, what does that tell me? That tells me two things. The first thing that that tells me is that there is a vertical flip in this problem. So that's going to change the pattern of the graph. And then it also tells me that the amplitude, which is the absolute value of A, is going to be 7. So those are kind of two key things that we get just from the beginning part of identifying what A is. The other thing that I get right now, straight out of this, is going to be that D is equal to 5. And you will remember that that's your vertical shift up. So the vertical shift up is going to tell me that my midline is now going to be Y equal to 5. So that kind of gives us the center line of the graph that we're looking at. So just by doing that, we've identified two key features of this graph. It's height, the fact that it has a flip, and actually three key features, and that the midline is at 5. Now, once I have that, I actually technically kind of, you know, skipping around just a little bit, we can come down here and answer D because the range has to do with the vertical transformation. So let's kind of put this in pink as well. That the range, and I'm going to remind you of this couple of facts that we had, the min value is always equal to your midline minus your amplitude, and your max is always equal to your midline plus your amplitude. All right, so we can kind of fill that in here. Our min in this problem is going to be our 5 minus 7, or negative 2. Our max is going to be our 5 plus 7, which is going to put us at 12. So that tells me that my range, and I'll put the answer here in green, is going to be from a min of negative 2 to a max of 12. And that's going to be important to kind of keep in mind when we go to sketch the graph in a little bit, that that's the min to max of this graph. All right, so now the other part of this, kind of a little bit of the harder part, is the interior part, the horizontal transformations. Now, what we're going to do here to identify our B and our C is we're going to need to take what's inside here, and we're going to need to divide out the pi over 6. And we're going to factor it out. And when we factor it out, we're basically trying to figure out the phase shift or the C that goes there. Now, what you want to remember, and I'm going to do the work over here on the side, so just draw a little line, that when I have pi over 6x minus pi over 12, option 1 is to simply divide out the pi over 6, because that's what factoring does. So I would divide this by pi over 6, and I would divide that by pi over 6. When I do that, the pi over 6 in front of the x is going to cancel, and there's the x, and you notice that's kind of what I started doing there, minus 
Now, when you divide by a fraction, remember that you multiply by the reciprocal, 6 over pi. So this ends up being x minus 1 half. And so we can fill in our 1 half inside of there. So that's option number 1. Option number 2 for calculating this would have been to take pi over 6, x new, minus pi over 12, set it equal to x old and solve. Pi over 6 x new equals x old plus pi over 12. And then I multiply, get rid of the pi over 6 both sides by 6 over pi. And we get 6 over pi times x old plus 1 half. And so by doing that solving, this is where we get that our phase shift is 1 half. Your choice, I have a tendency to just do option one because I think that's just as fast and gets me what I want to do as opposed to using the X old, Y old. Okay. Now, once we have that, let's go ahead and identify our other items. I'm going to take these portions of this and I'm just going to move that work over here to the side um, because it's kind of just something that you do in order to find the phase shift. We can label that for ourselves as, oops, let me undo that. Finding phase shift. That is what both of these options did, option one and option two, your choice of how you want to do it. All right, so let's come over here. Let's finish out this first thing. So now that I've done the factoring inside, now I know B is pi over 6, and I know C is 1 half, which is my phase shift. The phase shift is telling you that we're going to shift the graph to the, and ignore what I just wrote, uh, to the right, 1 half. Now the B, remember, is giving us the number of cycles into pi. So that's actually my answer to B. How many cycles will f of x have in 0 to 2 pi? It will have pi over 6 cycles, which is approximately 0 0.52 cycles in 2 pi. And that's kind of important. So as we start sketching it, we're going to see that between 0 and 6.28, there's only going to be about half a cycle in that, right? Now, in terms of determining our period of the graph, we're still going to use B as well to determine that. Now, remember that B was 2 pi divided by the period. That's one way to look at it. And so we could look at it in those terms and take our B value, pi over 6, and set it equal to 2 pi over the period. I can cross multiply, so the period times pi equals 12 pi, and then I can divide by 12, which is going to give me that the period is equal to 12. And so that's also going to be important for our discussion that we're going to have. Pretty much everything we're doing here at the beginning is to get all the parts that we need in order to graph the problem. So we find the transformation form. We find A, B, C, and D. We use each of those to get information about the graph. Now, remember that we were also identifying in this what's our parent graph. Our parent graph right here is going to be a cosine. And my pattern, notice that we had a vertical flip. So that right there is going to tell me that the pattern of the graph has changed. Now, you have to remember what is the pattern of the original parent graph, the cosine. The original pattern was max inflection, min inflection, max. And if you think about what a vertical flip will do to that, a vertical flip will change it, and all the maxes and mins get reversed. So it becomes min inflection, max inflection, min. And so that's also going to be something that we need when we go to graph it. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use these horizontal transformations. We've got to figure out where the beginning of the period is, where the end of the period is, 
what the five key points are. Now, if, if you just take it step by step, it's not too bad. So what we're going to do first is we're going to use the fact that the period is 12. Ignoring the phase shift, if the period was 12, instead of going from 0 to 2 pi and using the quadrantals, we are going to go from 0 up until we get to 12. And then we're going to divide this out into our four sections. And it's very easy at this point to go half is 6, 3, and 9. So if there was no phase shift, this would be our one cycle of the graph. But now we want to add in the fact that we went right one half to this. So each one of these five key points that we have is now going to change. We're going to move everything over just a half. And so it would start at point 0 0.5 and then just add a half, 3.5, 6.5, 9.5, and then 12.5. So we just added one half each one to shift it over. So you first take care of the period beginning to end and divide into our four sections. And then we take those and we add in our phase shift. And so that gives us our five key points. So now we're ready to graph. Now there's two things you have to plan ahead for in your graph. One is the x-axis and the y-axis. Now, the x-axis, I need to go all the way out to 12. And they did ask me to make sure that I included some negative values for key points. So that means that kind of as I am setting this up, I'm going to put the y-axis in the center. I'm initially going to start with just going by, um, let's go up by 3. 3, 6, 9, 12. And then that way, when I'm looking at this, I mean, if we want to, we can add in the little tick marks for each one that's in here. When I go to add in the key point, just place them on the axis where they belong. So here would be one half, and then we have our 3.5, our 6.5, my 9.5, and my 12.5. So we get those on. All right, next we want to go back a period. Now I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back. Here would be negative 3, um, negative 6, negative 9, negative 12. Now we're just going to go back. Now one thing to notice when you look at this is that the distance in between one of these uh, beginning to the quarter point right there is only 3. So you're basically adding three each time you go up along the axis. So to get to the other critical point, I'm just going to go and subtract three to go backwards to get some negative value. So if I subtract three, I would be at negative 2.5. And then if I subtract three again, I would be at negative 5.5. And then if I subtract three again, I would be at negative 8.5 and subtract 3 again, I would be at negative 11.5. So that kind of helps me get those axis points down on the graph. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our midline in. Our midline is at 5, and we have to go down to negative 2 and up to 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Good, I can fit it in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you kind of dot in your midline on this, and now we're kind of golden because we already have our max and our min. So we simply start at our beginning, and remember our beginning was at one half, and that started at a min, and then we went to inflection, and then we go to a max, and then we go back to an inflection, and then we go to a min, and then we just continue our pattern, following the same cycles, going across until we have it in, and then we can kind of sketch in our graph. And there's our completed cosine graph. All right, I went ahead and pre-filled in the equations for the last part. And the only thing that's changing is the phase shift. If I want to change my function and whether I have a flip or not, all I have to do is make the pattern match. So to be a positive cosine, the pattern has to be your uh, max inflection, min inflection max. And you can see that that starts at the green. So I color-coded these so you could see where the starting points were. And notice that the only thing I did in each of these was change the phase shift. All right?
try the three problems below and come back and look at the 